please be advised that this video at various moments contains flashing imagery on screen. Good day everyone, welcome back to my channel, I'm Jeremy and thank you very much for checking out this On The Disc video, a series of videos here on my channel where I show you what is on the disc of a Blu-ray release I have already done an unboxing of. Today we are going to follow up on my recent video with looking at what is on the disc of Street Fighter 2 The Animated Movie, available now from Discotech Media in North America. If you saw the unboxing, you know I'm pretty excited about this film, so let's not wait any further, let's delve straight into the main menu of this disc. And what I will note before I go any further is that I have muted all audio on this disc for the purposes of this video, and that this is a Region A Blu-ray, so if you're planning to get yourself a copy of this, make sure you can play Region A Blu-rays on your hardware accordingly. To begin with, as you can see on the main menu, we have got four options. We have got Play Film, Setup, Scenes, and Extras. Now, before kind of showing you some footage from the film itself, we need to delve into the Setup menu here, and this also partly plays into what is contained in the Extras. So, as you can see, there is a heck of a lot of audio options, and also a heck of a lot of subtitle options. There is a specific extra, which I'll show you a little bit of in a few minutes, that actually delves into the differences between all of these. From my perspective, I was aware of one or two of these versions of the film, but honestly, I wasn't aware of all of these. And one of these is also has also, excuse me, been created especially for this Blu-ray release. When it comes to English language audio, being from the UK, if you couldn't already tell by my accent, I was only familiar with the UK version of the dub, which, quite frankly, is very sweary. It's got a lot of swear words in it. That is the version I just assumed was the default version of the film. I then found out there was a, a slightly less, a slightly lesser filthy version, let's call it that, in the US, which is the US unrated version. You can also see here the UK unrated version as well, the one I'm familiar with, is also included. The difference between these though being that the US unrated has got 5.1 audio, that the UK unrated has stereo audio. In addition to this, there is also the, the English 13 rated version. How to sum up this version? They, they explained this in the extra feature, which I'll get onto, but essentially they recorded multiple dialogue versions of this film when it was all being recorded, like a very clean version, a slightly less clean version, the filthy version, if you will. This is basically the clean version, the, the PG-13 version, as it is phrased in North America. So you've got that option of audio as well, should you want to watch the film with that. You've also then got... English with the original score, which has been created especially for this particular release of the film. What is this? Simply put, it's the English voices for the first time mixed alongside the original Japanese soundtrack, because the actual background soundtracks are completely different. The English language soundtrack has got a lot of rock songs, it's got for example an Alice in Chains song in there, there's a Korn song in there, funny enough how I was sort of first introduced to some of these bands as well, because I'm a bit of a metalhead myself. But this version was mixed specifically by the person who originally handled the mixing duties for the film. I believe the name is Les Claypool. It's mentioned in one of the extra features that I keep referencing, which I will get onto properly in a few moments. But they actually remixed the film to go alongside the original Japanese soundtrack, which is phenomenal. I didn't even know this was a thing until I actually popped the disc in. It is freaking amazing that this is on here. You, of course, then have the original Japanese version, i.e. Japanese voices, Japanese soundtrack, but then you've also just got the isolated Japanese score. And this is literally the entire film with just the Japanese soundtrack, no dialogue playing over the top whatsoever. You've got so many versions of this film to watch, it is mind-blowing. Speaking as someone who has got a big affinity for this film, because it's one of the first anime films I ever saw growing up. As I mentioned in my unboxing, when it came to the VHS version, it was one of the first VHSs I actually had. So for me, this is basically catnip. I'm so excited about all this. But now, the subtitles. This is another dynamic to head on to now. So in case you're unaware, there are naming differences between English and the original Japanese naming conventions when it comes to Street Fighter. Specifically, this affects more often than not Balrog, Bison, and Vega. Those names were sort of flipped around, if you will, when it was localized outside of Japan. Primarily, it's rumored, I should say, because of Balrog 
as we know him, being called M. Bison in Japan, having quite a similar look, appearance, and perhaps backstory in some ways to Mike Tyson. So rather than being called Mike Bison, as it was actually known in Japan, they switched it over to Balrog. So those names are flipped over, but Discotech Media have accommodated those naming conventions by having subtitle options to include the US names, as it were, the English language names, as we perhaps know them more often than not, or you can watch it with the Japanese names highlighted accordingly as well, so effectively watching it in its original form is pretty one way to sum that up. You can also just have, quite simply, signs and Japanese song subtitles on screen, so if you don't want any subtitles but you want on-screen text translated and song lyrics, that is the one for you. Just the signed subtitles, in case there's any on-screen text, you've got that covered. Or you can just turn them off. Take your pick, quite frankly, because there are so many ways to delve into this. For the purposes of demonstrating how the subtitles look, though, I will show you English subtitles US names to begin with, and I'll give you a couple of examples as well as to how that looks when we get to the film proper. So for the sake of just picking an audio, let's go with English UK, and then I'll pick English subtitles US. Now let's check out a couple of little bits from the film and I'll show you what those subtitles look like. This footage looks so good. This is easily the best I've ever seen this and I can't wait to watch this film properly. It's just looking so good. So, I appreciate this is a very dark scene, so, so let's skip forward a scene and I'll give you an example as to how the subtitles look. So right there you can see London is subtitled there in the white text, that is how on-screen text will appear. Doesn't apply to that thing because the banner is in English. You can also now see some dialogue being said, and that comes up in the yellow subtitles. Perfectly fine for me, very, very legible, very, very happy with how that appears. Jumping forward a little bit more. We get a bit more in-depth now into some dialogue here, and here's an example of longer-form dialogue, which covers a couple of lines on screen, so you can see how the text will appear for you. Again, very, very clear, very, very readable. I am very happy with how this is looking so far. Gonna jump forward again now to try and give you an indication as to how some more on-screen text may look. There's another example there of how the on-screen text will be subtitled for you. Very, very clear, like I say, very, very happy of how this is looking so far. But now let's look for an example of the naming conventions that I mentioned being a little bit different. So let me give you an indication as to how that will look. While I'm here, you can also get another example as to how some of the longer form subtitles will look as well on screen. Once again, very, very clear, very happy with how this is looking. So I've jumped forward a bit here to go to a scene where in a few moments time they will be mentioning a character by name to give you an example as to how it will appear. So give it a second. There you can quite clearly see he specifically mentions Bison in the subtitle there. This is now a good opportunity to show you how the pop-up menu will look as we go along. So as you can see, we've got the option to simply close the menu as needed, or we've got setup where you can choose any of these once again. For the purposes of this, we will select JP names. And now what I'll do is I'll double back a little bit just to get to that moment once again for you. So here we are now back at the same moment. You'll see there he says Vega instead of Bison. That is an example as to how they have accommodated both language options for you when it comes to the names. So you can pick very easily whichever one you would prefer. When it comes to pop-up menu functionality, just to focus on that again for a moment or two, you have got the option to select scenes, which you can literally just pick the scene. They're very easily numbered here and such. You've got a lot of scenes you can delve into, so it's great to see they have accommodated that. And of course, you can delve into the extras menu as well. But we'll be delving into that properly in just a few moments' time. First of all, let's get back to the main menu. I already gave you a little glimpse of it, but just for the sake of continuity and such and completion, here is how the scene selection looks from the main menu. Exactly the same as you saw in the pop-up menu there. You can pick whichever scene you want to go to very, very easily. If we now take a look at the extras menu, because as you've already, as you can probably guess, there's a lot to delve into here. So first of all, the PG-13 cut. I mentioned that there was a more cleaner cut of the film. Basically, Discotech have included that version of the film on here as well. So as well as having the uncut version, which is the one we've been seeing footage from, you've also got this cleaned up version of it, i.e. the version with not a lot of blood, certain cuts and stuff perhaps being altered and amended as needed. So you've got that version here, be it with the English or the Japanese score, also available to watch on here, really making it just the most complete version of this film that you can own possible. This is just magnificent in my opinion. 
You've also got some trailers for the film, just give you a little glimpse of those, starting off with the Japanese trailer. So when it comes to these Japanese trailers, Discotek very much took the assets they were given, but have subtitled the trailers so you can see what is being said as they progress. We've got about five minutes worth of trailers on here, so there's a lot to delve into when it comes to wanting to see how the film was promoted in its native Japan. Just to jump forward a bit, this is the second trailer now. As you can see, it gives a great indication as to the way that they were marketing it. I always love looking at Japanese trailers like this, especially from older anime, much like this film. I've just jumped forward again, so now we are taking a look at the third trailer out of these. <laughs> there is a lot of text on there, but fair play, Discotech. You've, co you've covered that excellently. <laughs> So now let's delve into the English trailers. We've got about two minutes worth of trailers here. I'll give you a little glimpse as to how some of them are looking. Again, audio is muted for this, so apologies for that. But I actually remember seeing some of these trailers on the old VHS, so this is already just a big nostalgia trip for me. I remember these trailers so vividly. It's so great to see it again. Jumping forward now to the next trailer. I don't remember this trailer as much, actually, so I'm definitely going to take a better look at this, but this is already a very action-packed trailer, as you can see. Let's jump forward again now. But this is the second trailer on the disc, so... Oh, hello. That's Ian Wright. W what? <laughs> I was not expecting Arsenal legend there. Ian Wright at football, for those of you who don't know, to be promoting the Street Fighter 2 movie. That has just caught me off guard. I was a big Arsenal fan myself. That has caught me totally off guard. Sorry, was not expecting that. But back onto what we're looking at here. So, we've gone through the trailers. Let's get onto some of the other features they've got here. First of all, interactive movie game cutscene collection. Now, what Discotech Media here do spectacularly is they give you a nice little int introduction as to what this is about. Simply put, this was a game released exclusively in Japan that had some cutscenes, largely a full motion video game, and these are the cutscenes from that game that they have also subtitled as well. So, have fun watching some of these as well. Give you a little glimpse so you can see what they're like. It's important to note as well that this footage itself isn't remastered, if you will. It's very much as was intended for the actual game, so you will notice a difference in picture quality, but it's still awesome to check these out as well. So good. Jumping forward a bit. So you get some cool cutscenes here as well, which some of them look very, very similar to the movie, if, if perhaps not actually are from the movie itself, just amended slightly. So it's also quite interesting to see it from that perspective. Another thing that's also really interesting as well is actually realising just how much of a restoration job has been done on the film because the footage, the, the, the main feature on the Blu-ray as it, as it were, compared to this, it's very much a night and day experience so it is fascinating to look at while also being different at the same time in some ways. Jumping forward. Also worth noting that we're getting sort of lots of little clips now as we go through these. So I'm not going to go through all of them. I'm going to jump back to the, the extras menu because there's a lot more to get through. I don't want to spoil all of this for you. But it's a good indication just to the little bits of cutscenes that were included in this film. And it is a fascinating thing to check out. Oh, there's a Kuma while you're at it. So with that being said, I'm going to go back now, much as I want to watch more of this. Next up, we have got English home video opening and closing credits. The way this works out, folks, is... I mentioned that there is like the, the unrated version for the UK, the US, and there's a PG-13 version. This is basically highlighting those main differences, as it were, I am to understand. So if I click on this, we shall see some examples. So what Discotech do on this section, which is really, really great to see, is they actually tell you which version you are about to watch, which makes it very, very easy to discern which version you are watching. So no guessing involved from me. So with that being said, I'm going to jump forward a little bit to a moment that I know for a fact will be edited compared to what the uncut version will be, so just bear with me for a second. I vividly remember one of the big climactic moments of this battle that I remember seeing was that he does the dragon punch and it just it basically just rips open his chest, which in this version does not happen. They cut that out immediately. So now let's jump forward and I'll show you a little compare and contrast. So now we're in the unrated version. I'm going to jump forward again now so I can show you exactly what I mean. Bear with me one moment. Here we go. Here's the same bit now. 
But then to show the big difference, oh yep, th that's a massive difference, isn't it? That is a massive difference, to say the least. Another thing I've not actually shown you as well is the fact that there are sort of English title cards that appear over this as well, and that's the, that's what I remember. So it is very fascinating being able to see the differences here and just have them one by one like this, really, really cool to see. Now, when it comes to the ending credits, there wasn't any difference, as you can tell by what's on the screen there by saying all versions. So it's literally this one version of the ending credit sequence. That is the big difference between this and the original. Just to jump forward a little bit to probably give another indication as to probably what was different about it. We get this last little teaser bit where the truck is going towards Ryu and he jumps towards the truck and the picture freezes. And then the credit rolls. And if I remember correctly, it will fade to black as the credit roll starts appearing on screen. That's what I vividly remember watching this when I was growing up. Yep, there we go, and we get some... <laughs> of course, one of the big differences as well is the fact that at this point, I think it's the song Blind by Korn that's playing in the background, if I remember correctly. So, this is also a big difference of the credit sequence as well. So that's here as well, if you want to listen to that. It's fascinating being able to watch this stuff. But with that being said, there is more to delve into on this disc. Next up, a titleless version of the ending credits. You may have seen in the footage there to begin with that there were some title cards coming over the top of the footage as Ryu started to walk away. This version, it will be completely clean. Let's take a look. So I've jumped forward a little bit here, but as Ryu is starting to walk away, what would happen in the English credits normally is that in the top left corner, there would start to be names of people involved in the film appearing on screen. That is not the case in this version, which you can also see it is just far better quality footage, quite frankly. I'm imagining this is probably just an individual tape that was supplied to them and or it's taken from the ending credits of the film on the disc specifically. So if I jump forward now to where the truck comes involved, and he will jump towards the truck, and then the picture will probably more than likely freeze. And then that, everyone, is how that ends. That is literally the ending sequence there. The picture will probably start to fade, I imagine, or it will abruptly cut to black. Gradually fading there. So that is how the sequence ends. But there is lots more to delve into, because we have the next page. So, this is something I was alluding to earlier. This different cuts video liner notes section here. This is fascinating. Let's delve into this. This extra is hosted by Mike Tool, who provides the voiceover for this, and basically goes into the differences between the various versions that are included in this film, elaborating on the certain details I've already alluded to in much more detail when it comes to the various different naming conventions, the different dub versions that there were, why there were different dub versions. It's genuinely really, really great to watch this and get a proper feel for why there are so many versions of this film. Genuinely fascinating stuff. What they also do is go into details of the different cuts that each version of the film utilizes as well and what was and wasn't included. So do be on the lookout for that as well. I don't want to spoil all of it either, so very much going to let you delve into this yourself so you can get a greater appreciation for just how many different versions of this film there are. But following on from that, we also have alternate takes. This literally gives you a bunch of audio dialogue bits that were recorded that either were used or weren't used in the actual final film. As a hardcore fan of this film, this is fascinating to actually watch. And the first instance here, which obviously you can't hear because I've muted the audio, it has the voice actor of Ryu shouting the move in different ways as it were. It, it's really, really worth going out of your way to watch this and just seeing the little differences that they add. In, in the case of this clip here, it's a very, very clean thing that's said and just outright filthy thing that is said when it comes to swear words. So quite a difference there. I'm obviously more familiar with the latter of the two. And this whole extra as well is about six or so minutes long. So lots and lots of different takes to really delve into here and to get a greater appreciation for just how many versions of this film and how many takes the actors had to do as well. Let's move on to more extras. As we get into some text liner notes here, we begin with production history. What we've got here are a series of liner notes written by Reed Nelson, who goes into great depth about the history of this film. For the purposes of this video, I'm not going to go any further past this first page, because I think you really need to take this in, buy the Blu-ray, support the release, and give this a really good read. It really puts into context so many things about this film, and just the production of the film itself is a genuinely fascinating thing to read. So do go out of your way to read this when you have a copy of the Blu-ray in your collection. Next up, translation notes and trivia. 
In this section, we've got some more liner notes, but this time focusing specifically on some of the differences, which I've already alluded to and have been covered in one or two of the other extras as well. And again, adds another element of this being a complete package to get a greater appreciation for this film. Again, for the purposes of preserving the integrity of the disc and making sure you buy this and experience this for yourselves, not going to go any further past this one page. But this in itself gives you a great indication as to just some of the things they had to deal with, just from the naming convention alone, and also alludes to that, to that story that I referenced earlier in the video as well. Really, really great stuff to read. I encourage you once again to, to check this out when you have got the disc in your collection. Back to the extras. Character biographies. With this, it's actually quite a fun and unique extra because we've got some liner notes once again, but this time, as Discotech actually mentioned here in this first slide in the About section, these are taken from around the time of the movie's original release, and they've sort of cleaned up things when needed, but they've really tried to preserve the integrity as to how they were originally written. So it's a really nice little time capsule of seeing how the film was being marketed and presented to companies, perhaps people in general, at the time of its release. It's really great to see. Let's go to the first slide proper just to give you an indication. Really, really nice layout. This is the same for all the characters as well. Really, really simple to read. But again, just a nice little time capsule as to how things go. I also got to say, I do like the fact that Ryu's dislikes on this are spiders. <laughs> just got to say. Just a random fun note there. But all good fun. Got more extras now, so let's get back to the main menu. From here, we have got some production art galleries, beginning, first of all, with key art. Once again, got a nice little starting window here. This is all done based on the arrow cursors on either side, which you just have to hit the enter button on to advance to the next slide. In this case, as it just mentions, this is basically promotional material for the film. And the way they've done it is really, really cool and smart. So you get the full image presented here, for example, but then they'll do a close up for you so you can delve closer into that particular key art itself. It's a really, really nice touch. This is the image from the front cover of the slipcase on the Blu-ray. And if you want to get a closer look at it, they give you the opportunity to see that as well. I really like the way that they have delved into this. And this is the cover I'm familiar with when it comes to the original UK release. So again, catnip for me. Not going to go any further than that in this gallery. Because again, protecting the integrity of the disc. But really, really great stuff. Loving these key arts. Next up, model sheets. Once again, we get a nice little introduction here from Discotech explaining basically what the model sheets are and how they are very integral to the overall production of the film when it comes to making sure that people are the right size, quite frankly, and that that can be maintained from a consistency point of view throughout the film. Really, really interesting stuff to see and a great indication there as to the sizing of Ryu and Sagat. In this instance, it's a really great image there. It's also interesting to see as well how it's not necessarily just from scenes either, it's perhaps just different perspectives of things, like this for example, kind of a very dynamic shot there, but not actually a proper shot from the film. In this instance though, it's a great indication of Ryu as a character, how he will appear as well. What I'll do, we'll cycle through a couple more slides here, then we shall move on accordingly. Got a close-up to Ryu's face. Wow, that's... Actually, a heck of a lot of detail, considering that is a sketch. I, I've always got a greater appreciation for things like this every time I see it. So here is a great example for you, actually, when it comes to the sizing element of it. You've got the body of Sagat there next to, to Ryu. It's a great indication as to how they really had to keep the continuity going from a sizing perspective. Things like this always fascinate me. But again, not going to delve too much further into that, so you'll have to check this out when you have the disc yourself. Let's head back to the menu. Next up, layouts. We begin the layout section with a nice little quick introduction from Discotech once again as to about how the layouts were utilised in the context of the film's production. And we get a great series of images here showcasing a variety of instances of how they mapped out the story of the film in various instances. And just some of the detail as well is fascinating to look at. With that being said, not going to show you too much more. Again, check it out if you get the disc yourself. Let's head back to the menu. Move Studies. A fascinating video extra here. You get to see how special moves would translate into the 3D space once it's been animated and such. So they show a certain clip to you a couple of times at full speed, then they slow it down for you so you can get a good appreciation for what they're showing. So on the screen here, you can see Ryu throwing a kick, as it were. Really, really cool to see that. And you get it a couple of times fast, and then they break it down. 
slower, so you can really get an appreciation for how it was animated. Fascinating stuff, this. I love being able to get a glimpse behind the curtain, if you will, like this. It's a genuinely magnificent thing to see. But again, not going to show you all of this, so now let's head back to the main menu and we'll begin to wrap things up. With that being said, everybody, I think that just about wraps up this video. I hope this has been very informative for you and that you've enjoyed it. I will say, though, I've tried to cover everything in sort of as quick detail as I can for you. If you have if you have any specific questions of things I may have missed during the course of this video, please put them in the comments below. Let me know. I am more than happy to try and answer questions after the fact, assuming I can indeed do that for you. If there's anything you would like me to check, anything you maybe have heard about that you want me just to clarify or see if it's actually true, more than happy to help out the community and such for being able to answer finer details like that. But with that being said, Thank you very much for checking out this video. If you've enjoyed it, I've got lots more unboxings and on-the-disc videos already on the channel, and there's plenty more coming in the pipeline very soon as well. Once again, thank you very much for watching. Until next time, I've been Jeremy. Take care, and have a nice day.